Guys, what's up? My name is Justin Mark, and in this three-part video series, we're going to be talking about some secrets to manifesting love and relationships, okay? So let me introduce myself, or reintroduce myself, if you already know me. Uh, I, I'm Justin Mark. I spent the last eight years traveling around the world, working with some of the top dating coaches, uh, influencers, and clients of mine, teaching, dating, social dynamics, soul skills, and relationships. And I've learned what makes a relationship and what breaks a relationship time and time again through my experiences, client experiences, uh, just tons of experiences, it's pretty crazy stuff. So in this three-part video series, I'm gonna be telling you how to manifest love, how to find love, how to fall in love, how to create these relationships, pretty much in thin air. It's pretty cool. It's almost like anytime you're bored, time to fall in love again, right? Right now, like full disclosure, I have like four different women I'm seeing intimately. Uh, like at that stage where it's like, we're all kind of like loving each other. It's interesting. And uh, everything's open, it's all cool. And everyone's cool and respectful. And it's actually really great. It's like one of the happiest times of my life. And it's a lot of fun too. And if you follow the advice in this three part video series, you can recreate these results. You can recreate any type of relationship dynamic results you want and live a very happy relationship life in a very consensual and respectful way. That's win-win for everyone involved. So. My name's Justin Mark. Let's jump straight into it. We interrupt this program for an important news announcement. Now, guys, wait, before we jump into the video, we're going to offer you a lot of value. We're going to give you a lot of advice. I want to push this content out to a new audience. So do me a favor right now. Smash the like button. When you click the like button on this video, it gets pushed out to new people. And uh, we want to help more people. So do me a favor right now. Click the like button and let's jump straight in. I really appreciate that. Do that right now. Let's just get back to the video. Okay, part two, keeping a partner, right? Well, look, maybe you're in love, maybe you're not. Who knows if you're in love? It's kind of funny how this works, right? There's that cute puppy love. There's that cute, innocent love. Then there's that like logical, jaded, I've been in love so many times, but I'm going to open up my heart and try to love you again, love, right? You want to kind of figure out what the dynamic is and who it is you're dating. A lot of people make the mistake of, I love you. Let's just date monogamously. <laughs> Even though it's never worked for you in the past. 80% of monogamous relationships end within the first year. If you make it past two years monogamously, there's an 80% chance you're gonna be with each other for life though, which is crazy how that works as well. But on average, non-monogamous, open relationship type dynamics or anything in between, uh, typically last three times on average the length. Pretty interesting how it works. So a lot of people make the mistake of like, I'm in love, I have these emotions, I feel these feelings. I guess I'm going to not date anybody else because I am sexually and emotionally attracted to you. So now I'm not going to date anybody else. Kind of silly thing to do. Imagine this, like actually logically imagine this. It's like, I have one best friend. Therefore, I'm not allowed to have any more friends. I have one friend, so I cannot have more of our friends. Then you meet some cool guys like, sorry, man, I can't be your friend because I already have a friend. <laughs> like, you know what, man? I can't take you on as a client because I already have a client and I really don't want to cheat on my client. Sorry, can't take you on, right? Kind of silly how that works, right? So social conditioning and modern society has kind of ruined dating, right? Social media kind of ruined it. You know, Instagram, Tinder, social, like, just, oh my God, like, I don't want to get into it. On one hand, if you play into it and you kind of just go with the non-monogamous frame, my God, you can have a lot of fun and meet a lot of cool people. I promise you that, okay? <laughs> really, really cool. Created a whole online course about online dating. Online-destruction.com, right? Check that shit out. Mind blowing. A lot of fun, okay? But if you fall into the stereotypical, like, I'm going to fall in love and monogamously date you, you're in for a very intensive journey full of suffering and personal growth and pain and emotions, which is fun to experience. So first things first, you want to figure out what type of relationship dynamic do you want? Do you want a monogamous relationship? Do you want to potentially get married and have children? Or do you want to just be a young, aspiring fuckboy and have lots of fun with pretty women in a very consensual and respectful way? What do you want? Figure out what you want. <laughs> Figure out what type of life you want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? God damn it. What do you want? Figure out what type of relationships you want. Short-term, long-term, medium-term, for one night, for one year, 
for one life. Who knows, right? It's up to you. But you gotta figure out what you want and you gotta know what you want. You gotta know who you are and what you want before even deciding. Because imagine, now you fall in love. You have emotions for this girl. I remember my first time falling in love, I was walking down the street with this beautiful girl and I started screaming. I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, I was like, whoa, what is this thing I'm feeling? I'm like, is this love? And I was like, I think I love you. I was like, what? <laughs> she's like, whoa, what? And then like a few days later, she's like, I love you too. And then like next thing you know, relationship, right? And I wasn't happy because I didn't want monogamy. I was not happy with monogamy. And it was a huge setback for me. And then a year later, I'm finally like, okay, can't do this anymore, break up, traumatized for a year, two years, whatever, right? So imagine how, not of having that right framing, that right communication early in, fucks you up so hard where you're literally set back years and it's funny how like a lot of guys will fall into these weird dynamics get married have kids and realize oh my god i made a mistake this is the wrong partner i spent three years four years five years 25 years with the wrong partner the wrong person because you fell into social conditioning right you fell into the disney fantasy of like my prince charming and my princess right it's like just come up with what you want See life for how you want it, not for how others told you it should be, okay? Do what makes you the most happy and what makes others happy in a win-win way, okay? It's funny because a lot of guys are even scared to bring up the whole non-monogamous relationship, but a lot of girls are really cool with it. Like I'm seeing four different girls right now and I kind of just like, I kind of just open with them. I kind of just joke about how I'm gonna get them pregnant and run away and change my name so I don't have to pay child support. I kind of joke about how they're so beautiful, so I just want their babies, but I don't want to pay money, so I'm gonna get them pregnant and then move to Nicaragua, right? I kinda make jokes about it. And I, I kinda make jokes about how I wanna have a threesome with her mother and her because I wanna get a taste of the recipe, right? And so it kinda like sets these weird frames and dynamics of like, oh, this guy is like kind of a fuckboy, but respectful and funny and goofy, but at least he's telling me up front. But instead of like saying, hey, by the way, Megan, I'm gonna have sex with a bunch of girls this week, including you. You can just kind of like ease them into it, you know? And, or just tell them stories from the past. Oftentimes I'll tell girls stories about how an ex-girlfriend put me in a relationship dynamic where I wasn't happy because it was a monogamous dynamic and I wasn't happy and it caused a lot of issues. So now they won't pressure me into that, right? It's pretty cool how that works. And so you want to do it in a consensual and respectful way. It's winning for both of you, right? Maybe she wants a monogamous relationship. Well, hey, look, great to meet you. All the best, take care, right? It is what it is, right? Oftentimes, when you're high enough value, offering a fuck ton of value, offering a ton of value, nobody's gonna push you in that monogamous relationship frame. She can do what's happy for both of you. If you offer a lot of value to the relationship and create win-wins, offer a ton of value, whatever value you have to offer, okay? Pay attention to her. Let her know how beautiful she is. Give her your intense masculinity, unfiltered, raw and real, who you truly are. Don't hold it back. Act from a place of loving yourself and sharing with others. Man, it's such a powerful place to come from that you can just control the dynamic in any way you want because you're acting from your purest form, your pure self. That is real love, okay? And it's really hard for a woman to not fall in love with that, honestly. It's very difficult for a woman to not fall in love with a man who's acting from his purest core. Women don't tend to fall in love with how the guy looks or the money or the status. That attracts them, but they fall in love with the man, okay? It's virtually impossible for a woman to fall in love with anything but who the man is. That's why it's important for you to know yourself because if you don't know yourself, you're gonna be attracting the wrong partners. You don't attract what you want, you attract what you are, right? When you know yourself, you know what you're gonna be attracting, right? If you don't like what you're attracting, work on yourself, right? Hit the gym, meditation, travel, education. Just work on yourself, whatever the fuck it is. You know what I'm saying? Go take a bunch of mushrooms and go like sing songs in the forest. <laughs> go to fucking Costa Rica on an ayahuasca retreat. You know what I'm saying? Go backpack Europe. Go travel to Africa to help starving children in Ethiopia. You know, like, I don't know, do something cool with your life till you build up yourself into who you're happy being. Then you'll tr attract people you're happy attracting. It's funny how that works, right? Because when you're looking for a relationship, you're not gonna find it. Like <laughs> You're not going to find a relationship when you're looking for it. You're gonna find it when you're not looking for it, when it blindsides you, when it's like, whoa, happened at the perfect moment. 
I feel like every relationship has a beginning, a middle, and end, but they all teach you something amazing. You grow from it so much. When I think about all the things I know, oh my God, like I learned it from the beautiful woman I dated. My YouTube thumbnails, I learned how to Photoshop from watching my ex-girlfriend do marketing for me. I started watching Quentin Tarantino movies because I was dating a beautiful woman in Mexico. Beautiful girl, cello player, really sweet girl. Such a nice girl. Nothing but great memories of this girl, okay? And she was like, you've never, well, she didn't speak English, so she's like, Tu nunca quieres Quentin Tarantino películas? And I'm like, no entiendo, bonita. I don't understand what you're saying, right? And <laughs> she started showing me like, Kill Bill. All these like crazy Quentin Tarantino movies. I'm like, oh my God. These are amazing. And she was listening to classical music. I'm like, dancing the waltz to classical music with her. I'm like, wow. And now all these like cool things about my personality. Where did I get it from? I learned it from women. Almost like half the things I know about the world. I learned it from other women. Humans are social creatures. You learn from others. And so when you date a lot and you love fully and live fully, my God, you learn so fucking much. It's really cool how it works. Okay, and when you get your heart broken, it's always gonna happen. Honestly, it's inevitable. If your relationship ends, every relationship is a beginning, middle and end. Even if you get married for like 57 years and then your wife gets in a car accident or something and she passes away or the fuck, or like stage four pancreatic cancer on her like 87th birthday, it's an end, right? But you learn from it. You always learn and you grow. It's amazing, okay? And the best part is if you pick the right people, the right partners, whether it's a short term or long term, you grow better. It's amazing. It's really cool how that works. The even best part is typically you're gonna find every relationship you have, you're just gonna attract better and better partners who are a better match for you every single time. Like think back to you, like chance if you're watching this video, you probably had like a first girlfriend. Maybe you didn't, maybe you did, I don't know. Or a first lover or whatever the fuck, right? And think back to the second and the third or the fourth or whatever, right? And I think to like the, I don't know, dozen to two dozen uh, intimate, passionate, loving relationship dynamics I've had. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, every single time, they're like more beautiful, better quality, better people, more interesting, more educated, more intelligent, more magical, more romantic, more like, oh my God, ecstasy. It's fucking incredible. And every time I go through a breakup and I cry calling my brother saying, fucking never let me ever fucking go through that again. Pulling my hair out, freaking the fuck out, tripping balls kind of become more like mentally and emotionally resilient. <laughs> so like I'm at a point where like I break up with a girl and it's like, hey, honestly, I love you all the best. Here's some money, take care of yourself, okay? See, you. see, you. let's stay in touch. It's cool, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's hard at first, but it becomes easier over time. The more you date, the more you love. So a lot of people that make this, this horrible mistake of closing off their hearts because it hurts too much. But the best part is like loving again, learning to love again is actually such a cool thing. It's actually such a powerful thing. I remember telling one of my best friends, my really good friend, Jason, that I think my ex-girlfriend just left me so fucked up that I couldn't love again until I realized I did. And then I did again. And every time it's better. And every time I'm like, better. It's more okay. So it's okay to love, but just make sure to do it fully. Make sure to not half-ass it. Not one fit in, one fit out. But also do it logically. Do it from a place of like logic, growth. What do you want out of life? The first couple times, it's kind of hard. Right, you're caught with feelings and emotions, but next time, the time after that, it gets easier and easier and easier, okay? And, you know, truth be told, if you're high status, high value, and you just give your love fully, they will love you back. But you gotta be high status. You gotta be full of value, and you gotta offer a fuck ton of value. The people who win the most in the world offer a fuck ton of value, okay? And therefore get the most love back. Now, always realize, the honeymoon phase will end. So it's kind of like, hmm, should we keep the relationship dynamic going? I remember my beautiful girlfriend who is an actress in Mexico. After like three months, I was like, the honeymoon period's ending. And then I kind of realized I'm not attracted to this person's personality. There's, there's this saying that, look, if you take away all the attraction, the physical attraction, the emotional, the arousal, all of that stuff, and you're just left with that person, would you be friends with them? Sometimes I'm like, no. So like, why am I with this person? You know, my beautiful Latina cello player, absolutely I'd be friends with her. She was amazing, she was so cool, right? But then like my cool, famous ex-girlfriend who was like an actress and stuff, I'm like, absolutely fucking not. <laughs> what the fuck, right? It's like, wait, what? No, right? 
So you gotta like really take yourself out of the emotions. Look at it objectively, subjectively, logically. Kind of see like, where is this going? If it's not going somewhere good, enjoy it while it lasts. And if it is going somewhere good, embrace it fully. Okay, embrace it fully, because it's gonna be fucking amazing. Just know something. You are playing with fire. You fall in love, you make a girl fall in love. Big, big, big fucking responsibility. If you make a woman fall in love with you, you gotta take care of that shit, you gotta nurture it, it could come back to bite you. All is fair in love and war, okay? And trust me, I've fucking seen it, okay? I've seen it. I'm not gonna talk about it publicly on YouTube, but I've seen some fucked up shit, some crazy, wild, weird things. And let me tell you something. I lived in Mexico. I had three different Latina girlfriends. Uh, and <laughs> man, there's no rules, okay? There are no fucking rules when it's true, raw, passionate love, okay? And honestly, it can be destructive. It's like, it's literally fire. You're playing with fire. It can kill you, help you, warm you. It can burn you. So you gotta be really, really fucking careful. And you gotta really, really communicate. Consent, respect, okay? Boundaries. We're gonna talk about that in part three, okay? Super fucking key, super important, okay? You make a girl fall in love. It's pretty like easy if you're a high value male and you can feel the emotions, generate the emotions inside yourself. Like, fuck, you, I want you. Feel it, embrace it, intensely. Come from your masculine core, your authority as a man, demanding her femininity come out in your dynamic, in your relationship. Very powerful. But just know once her feminine essence is out there on you, you're, it's a dangerous game, okay? You can get hurt, but it can also change your life forever in the most positive ways, okay? So ideally, you wanna set up a lifestyle that works for you. If you want to have kids, if you're like, look, I'm 35 years old and I wanna have children and I'm in a monogamous relationship, cool, go find a beautiful woman to have your babies. I remember one of my old students, he hit me up on Instagram recently, last week. Dude was pretty much borderline, like, artistic as fuck, like just dumb, like didn't know anything about social dynamics, kissless virgin. He just told me that he's engaged and he's having a baby. <laughs> Good for him, right? Good old Mike. And uh, Mike from college, he's one of my first clients from back in the day. And uh, it, it's just so crazy. I pretty much taught him game. He got in a relationship and now he's having a child. It could change your life, right? It could also really hurt you. So set up a lifestyle that works for you. Maybe you just want to be a young man having fun, playing the field, playing the games, okay? Doing a consensual and respectful way, not a way that hurts people's feelings, manipulates people, abuses people's trust, right? You don't want to put out toxic negativity and spread that onwards. You want to give value, offer value in the most, I guess you could say utilitarianism way, okay? You want to make sure everyone's winning as much as possible. Try not to hurt feelings, but also try to be honest and real with who you are and expressing that fully to others. So guys, that's pretty much it for part two. Just remember to love fully. Feel that relationship. Love it, embrace it, honestly. And just give your value to the world. And we'll see you guys in part three. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to watch part one, part two, and part three of this three-part video series so you don't miss anything. And uh, my name is Justin Mark. You can actually follow me on all social medias. If you have any questions, DM me. Uh, my new Instagram, DrunkJustin2. My Snapchat, SexyJustin. And join my Inner Circle Telegram group. Just Mark's VIP inner circle linked in the description box below. And uh, guys, if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button and click the bell notification so you're notified of new videos. And uh, we'll see you very soon. And also, if you have any comments, leave it down below. I love chatting with you guys. I love making this content for you guys. I hope you change your life. I hope you fall in love. I hope you experience it at least once or twice or thrice. Amazing, really cool. And it's always a crazy, crazy experience in general. So guys, thank you so much for watching once again. Just Mark. Talk to you soon.